audio we go a too much. We're supposed to like keep on. Maybe one more. I don't want people falling asleep. Like, how do you guys prefer the lights? Like half, fully on, fully off? Like this? One vote? Or like this? Yeah? Completely off. Okay. Completely off. Completely off. Completely off. Why? You don't want to see yourself. Yeah, I think that's good. So, welcome to AI at UCF. Um, hopefully, Zoom people type in the chat if you can hear this. Um, but we're trying to project the books because the mic is only on one side of the room. Okay, I guess they can't hear this. <laughs> well, yeah, so I'll, I'll try this. Well, I mean, if they could, they would respond. Yeah. Anyway, so we're, what we're going to start oh, off with. Chat. Oh. Okay. And, okay, let's go. Um, yeah, so we want to start off with, we always want to start off with something fun, not, you know, just hit you with boring stuff right off the bat, get people excited, get people interested, motivated. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of that for maybe, I don't know, the next 15 minutes, and then we'll get into a club overview and, and some other stuff. But first, we just kind of want to show you all the power of AI and, um, yeah, really, there's there's so many cool things you can do with it. So, um, yeah, I think we can go to the next slide or just exit out of the slideshow because we have some tabs on there. So, yeah, we initially, I had like three things written down for fun activities, and then they brought me like 20 more in the last 10 minutes. So um, that's why we have a bunch of tabs open. Um, so we can kind of... Pick and choose. Uh, I mean, first go to the smart camera thing. This is the, the one of the fifth tab. The one that has the thing. <laughs> so this is a smart camera, which um, an example of something that you can learn how to make from this club. I actually did a workshop on how to make this thing. I didn't create the workshop. It was made by someone from Google. Um, but I gave this workshop and taught people you know, how to make something like this in the span of maybe an hour. Um, and so it's, what it does is it's a smart camera with object detection built into it. Um, so right now it's obviously only detecting people, but it can detect some other things um, with uh, varying degrees of accuracy. Like I think maybe a phone, if you, if you put your phone up, maybe, yeah, something over there. What if you cover yeah, it's, it gets a little complicated, right? So basically it's trained on data um, from thousands of maybe millions of images. And so if in that data set, there's enough photos of people covering their faces then it would have learned that that's still a person, you know? Um, so, you know, right off the bat is something that, I mean, this is using a, a already a pre-trained model. So it's just the implementation of you know, using the model with the camera and everything. Um, so we did train the model from scratch, like this is pre-trained and everything, but you can you can go really far without ever even touching the source code of machine learning um, just by using pre-trained models that already exist. So yeah, there's some other cool things like the so who's who here raise your hand if you've heard or seen chat GPT? Wow, that's amazing. I guess that same question. There's, no there's some seats over here at the front. Yeah, so no one likes to sit at the front. Before we go. Um, I think that's quite amazing because our full intro meeting, so you can see kind of the speed of progression. At our full intro meeting, I asked this group of people, 
hey, who here has heard of GPT-3, which was the predecessor to chat GPT, basically. And I'd say maybe it was like 20% of people in the room had heard of it, which, you know, I was like, wow, that's amazing. So these things, they get big out of nowhere um, in the last, you know, I don't know, what's it been, like six months or a year that like stuff starts coming out in the news. It's not even just like the AI research circles or, or anything like, not, not even just AI club is like, you could talk to anyone and they're like, oh yeah, I saw that like chat GPT thing on, on like CNN, you know? So uh, this stuff is getting really big and we want to be kind of at the forefront of it. Want to be learning, you know, how it actually works, understanding a little bit more, but we'll get into that. Um, so the chat GPT thing, I think currently if you go to chat GPT, uh, the second tab after that is probably, no, yeah, yeah, it's at capacity right now because there's probably you know a thousand more people trying to access it. Um, but we did showcase uh, GPT three at our fall intro meeting, and basically what we did is um, you can you can come out if you want. Yeah. Um, there's also a seat there if you don't want to be in the front. <laughs> Even though. Uh, we had, we did a, what is like a Turing test. So do any of the hugging faces have any uh, text generation AI? I think it might have GPT-2. Yeah. So we did what is called a Turing test. Raise your hand if you've heard of a Turing test. Wow, oh, that's also, I think, okay, and that's around about the same people, same amount of people. Um, uh, basically, what a Turing too. test was is a famous test by Alan Turing to determine how smart an AI has gotten, you know, it's like, What's the key to general intelligence? And uh, no. Terry came up with this test, which was essentially, uh, if we can have an AI chatbot on the other end of, you know, talking to a human, so like you're talking to ChatGPT, and uh, the human on one side of it cannot tell whether they're talking to an actual human or a chatbot, uh, like just an AI, then that AI has reached some enormous level of general intelligence because you know a human talking to this thing can't even tell that it's it's not another human um so we can do a, a little quick test like this uh we did some and you'd be surprised at, at how difficult it can be. maybe gpt2 isn't as strong as gpt3 and chat gpt because they've added you know billions more neurons and everything but um yeah we can try it so maybe what we'll do is just like shut off the the power the projector real quick. All right, it might take the whole thing up. Um, <laughs> it's good. It's still on. Oh my God, how do I turn it off? Uh, no, I think it's I think it's this on, one, right? Okay. Well, I think the idea is, I mean, yeah, there's not much of a use. I mean, you could just click, just click laptop or something like that. Yeah, that would be good. And so now we can do a little fun Turing test experiment. Do any of you want to volunteer to be takers? Um, so the, the way this is going to work is we're going to ask someone from the audience for a chat prompt, you know, some kind of, could be a question, could be just a statement or something that we're going to input into the AI. And then the AI is going to have a response. Um, or one of them will have a response that they just came up with on the spot and they're going to tell you one of them. And then we're going to do a show of hands to see who can tell whether it was the human response or the AI response. Does that all make sense? Okay. Um, so firstly, yeah, any takers? <laughs> Three, okay. Nice, volunteer. And now what we'll need is some kind of input. So. It can be a, a statement, a question. I think questions usually are better, but as long as they're not too specific. Yeah. How was your day? How was your day? That's a good one. Maybe maybe a different different question. <laughs> CBT two really that bad? What was the output? 
<laughs> and yeah, it's just saying like, what did you do? It's like asking another question. It's not a good. Man, is not good. Well, anyways, let's let's try it. So, uh, so what was, did you modify the question? Or you, okay, what's the modified question? Um, person one colon, how was your day? Okay. One, whereas previously it was just how was your day? Okay. And now give a give the response. <clears throat> what does a good day mean? G colon. I'm not sure we have any good days. G takes one last time to say, I want to tell you what a good day has to. And then it cuts off. <laughs> sounds a, sounds a little bit robotic. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, let's try another one. Man, there's so many fun things that we could do. So let's let's just do a, a quick, yeah, another quick one. Um, any anybody have a question or a statement? Yes. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite color? Otherwise known as person one colon. What's your favorite color? All right, give either a human response or an AI response to that question. Okay. Um, Makanata, I think it's red, but you can't choose what color it is. Can you? Right, we couldn't. All right, raise your hand if you think that was a human response. <laughs> raise your hand if you think it was the AI. All right, that means uh, I'm guessing it was the AI. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's GPT two and not GPT three. But um, yeah, you'd be surprised at our last intro meeting. Uh, I, it was pretty much 50 50, which is as good as random guess. Um, so okay, let's move on to uh, uh, one of the other things, and then you can turn the. You guys want to do a stable diffusion? <laughs> this is good. Who has heard of Dolly 2 mid journey stable diffusion, text to image generation, generative adversarial networks, any of those things? So that's pretty good. So that's like what, maybe 40% of the people in this room? And the other 60% were here to teach you something. Um, if you didn't know, something like this is possible with AI. Um, you can type in a prompt, which <laughs> We even had a typo, we typed in AI at UCF A, and it'll generate some images based on past experience with looking at data sets of uh, images and labels of what's in those images, training it on millions, sometimes I think even more than that um, images. It was able to learn kind of like what, what the correlation is and you know take something like a prompt and generate these images. So these are not real people. This is not a real photograph or anything. I mean, you can tell it's very distorted. Um, and they have much better models than this by now already. Um, somewhere you genuinely can't tell that it's not real at all. Um, and so we get to prompt this thing and see, you know, what, what, what it can do, like just be creative with it. You know, if you want to see, you know, a panda riding a skateboard, we can generate an image of that, which is, you know, <laughs> A hundred years ago in human history, um, you either had to do, yeah, before the invention of Photoshop or anything like that, uh, you had to get, you had to be a really talented artist or get a really talented artist to paint that for you. Uh, nowadays, you can just generate the image. So, there's an example. And these things do have really long queue times, so it's going to take about 40 seconds to generate that image because there's like a hundred people trying to access the model at once. Um, so in the meantime, any text to image generation prompts, anything that you want to see? Yes. Two groundhogs fighting for dominance. Two groundhogs fighting for dominance. Yeah, that's it. Two, like the number two, or do you want to write out T? Oh, okay. All right, so we'll also use Dream Studio in the meantime, which is just another text to image generation. So this is AI, artificial intelligence at UCL. Yeah, it's got the same vibe. It is like theory, you know. Two brown, wait, brown hogs or brown hogs? Brown hogs. Fighting each other for dominance. 
Oh, this one's a lot faster. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like if you told me this was a photograph, I'd be in. Kind of looks like, like they're. Doesn't look like they're fighting though. Looks like they're fighting. Yeah, <laughs> this looks more. Looks nicer. Oh, another part. That now you see the power of it, right? So. Did you have one? I was gonna say we could add the word like cartoon or groundhog. Cartoon groundhog. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea to put it. Uh, you want to check on the other one, the panda writing the sleep one? <laughs> Yeah, that one's like a you know a dog who's something else kind of thing. It's basic. No. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the the goal of, of our club is to learn a little bit more about how this works because it seems a little bit just like magic. I mean, even to me. Um, but the goal is that we're all here to you know learn together. Some people have more experience than others, and so we teach each other all the time. Um, uh yeah so we can we can talk more about that at it can be a general body meeting discussions pro, we can do projects involving these generative adversarial networks um that can do these things all types of stuff really yeah have you seen like tune a video or something like that uh two something it's like it's like tune a video it's like basically they like turn like um text input to like a video um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw something like that. I think there was actually one that um, one a uh, film film showcase or a film contest. It's like a short film contest. There was a film generated entirely by AI that won the film contest. Oh really? Oh. Um, yeah, competing against human films. Oh yeah. Um, and we we actually watched it at one of our meetings in the fall. Um, it was you know it was it was pretty interesting. Like you could kind of tell that it wasn't, it was just different, you know, it didn't look like something made by a human, but it was, it was cool. Um, so what's this? Yeah. That's mid journey, which is like another model that was like training images, uh, but then it was like fine tuned by using human feedback, like wait, what humans like find like aesthetically pleasing, and then like improve, improving from there. This one is paid though. I think, paid, I think you can like, get like a free trial in, in, in this one. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I mean, it kind of it, it began with like a beta that you got to be on a special email list and you got to apply, and only a handful of people will have access to. You know, that was maybe even like two years ago. It's like this just didn't exist, you know, to this level of detail and perfection. Um, and nowadays, it's like pretty much anybody can find it on a website. And so the field progresses really, really fast. Um, and that's how this, there's just always content to talk about like current events just don't end. And I, I can showcase a little example of that, but yeah. So I guess, yeah, we have like maybe, do we have any other really cool fun things that we can talk about? There's a, a hand raise. Oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I know mid journey is like a bot that can find your Discord server, right? Yeah. When you press like variation on this or like enhance this, is that the training data that they use to fine tune the model? Yeah, most yeah, likely. That's like what humans prefer if they want variations on that photo. Yeah. Um, yeah, to some extent. I mean, uh, I, I used Mid Journey like two months ago and it was not even this good. Yeah, so the um, thing is, like, the authors, when they first published Mid Journey, it was like, it wasn't too great. Like, like you compare, it was similar to the images that you, like, you saw in, like, in the early image generation. The thing is that when you have uh, tons of people, like, giving them free trials, you should test images and generate. You have like those four buttons and then you can like kind of know which images are like the best ones and then they fine tune and that's when they uh, created the version four it's like from the previous one and then uh, it's they got better and better you do have to be a little bit careful about that because you can run into something like a, a feedback loop where so you, you first start with the ai and it's trained on human generated images right because that's all there was before this became a thing basically um, so you train it on, you know, like 
painters and cartoons and like everything hand drawn or or photographs, etc. Um, but and so some of them, I think Dolly Two still has like these little watermarks on the bottom. And what those watermarks are is to make sure that the AI doesn't accidentally train on one of its own images that it produced. Because anytime you have a feedback loop in a system, that's it could easily spiral out of control. You know. So now that like the internet is flooded with all these AI generated images, um, they they're trying to be really careful about making sure that they don't get into these feedback loops where you know it just gets worse and worse because it's training on its own stuff. That's like you're not really training anything if you're just you know garbage in garbage out stuff. Um, but they've they've obviously handled that and they do sometimes have experiments where it's like. Well, what if we do, you know, try this feedback loop thing? Um, so a lot of things and kind of the, the way the variations work is like the images start off as just a pattern of noise. And then they kind of like, if you've ever seen like those, like uh, that old, like, like those CSI shows or something where they're like enhance, zoom in, you know, zoom in, enhance. And they just keep doing that until they can see like a crystal clear picture. It kind of takes a bunch of noise and then it keeps enhancing it. Um, until you get, you know, like something super detailed. So you can easily just change the pattern of noise that you feed into it. And then out from that, you'll get an entirely different image of the same prompt. So that's how it's able to generate, like, not just one image from your prompt, but you can generate literally millions of images um, just by changing the noise. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's so much to talk about, really. And I guess, so yeah, the, the one last thing, you can go back to the PowerPoint. Um, yeah. Then the one last thing, so uh, yeah, agenda, I mean, you, you will see. Let's go to the next. So I literally, today, I was trying to get, I was trying to access ChatGPT. So I just Googled this about two hours ago. I Googled ChatGPT, because I was like, okay, I want to go to the website and use it. And then bam. One day ago, news articles, eight hours ago, news articles. This could happen any day. Like tomorrow, if you Google ChatGPT, there will be a different news article about a different thing that it did. And so this today or yesterday, it happened to be that I passed an MBA exam. It's a master's in business administration, I think. Yeah. So there was a master's in business administration exam given by a Wharton professor. Wharton is known as one of the most prestigious top business schools in the country. Um, and the AI just you know, passed it. So um, it, it starts to get scary when you're like, Ooh, is this thing like, you know, super intelligent? Is it the Terminator? What else can it do? Yeah. So here's what I understand it is all the information that chat GPT responds with stored in its weights and biases, or is it using a text summarization, looking up the contents of your question on the internet? And then responding to your input. Um, it's complicated. <laughs> Basically, I mean, yeah, it, it has some like it has some encodings of patterns and words. So if I say like the right, the word that comes after that is not gonna be like and I'm not I would never say the and right. I would say like the dog, the apple, you know, a noun comes after that. So it, it kind of the weights and biases develops these relationships between, you know, like what comes after certain words. And so it can keep extending that. Like when you see like the uh, autocomplete on your phone and you're like typing a sentence and it's like, okay, would well, you want to put this word next? And like, yeah, I do. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of works a little bit more like that, um, but there's all types of different models that work in various different ways. And, you know, it's, it's really complicated. So, I guess the short answer is yes, it can be that, and it can also not be that. Um, yeah, any other, you know, ideas, comments about? I like how you can see the, the clickbait article versus the not clickbait article. Which one is the clickbait? Chad GPT took an MBA exam. See, you're not a kid. You're like, yeah, I want to ask again. Yeah. And here, the spoilers. Um, so yeah, all right. That's it for, for current events and the fun stuff. Stuff. And now we can get into a little bit more about the actual club. So yeah, I'll do this slide. So again, the mission of our club is to educate people, and it's to do a lot more than that. It's to foster this hotspot 
of intelligence researchers and engineers, friends, people who like AI, uh, people who just want to learn more about it and they've heard about it. We had it, we were in the club showcase all day today. And there are people who came up to us and like, oh, I'm a pre-med, I'm in pre-med, but you know, at my at this research lab, they were using AI for like this thing, and you know, med school, whatever, all this stuff. So every field is using AI nowadays. Um, and computing in general, like pretty much everywhere. Maybe I exaggerated, not every single field is using AI, but a lot of them are. And if they're not currently, then maybe in 10 years they will. So um, we, we want to be at the, the cutting edge, you know, um, and kind of demystify it because there's a lot of misconceptions and, you know, a, a lot of stuff that you hear in the news that's completely not true, you know. So, okay, now we can get, you can move the Zoom thing. To Zoom so nobody can um, so as for the main structure of our club is we have different groups. Because, I mean, I strongly believe that there isn't one, you know, one right way to learn something. And different people learn in different ways and different people are interested in different things too. Um, so, yeah, do you guys want to, maybe each director goes through their own things? So, and we have those uh, also other slides that go more in depth. So those, yeah. just a summary, yeah. So um, GBMs are basically, so I'm the GBM director. Uh, GBMs are basically like a um, high level overview of more complex topics like neural networks, reinforcement learning, stuff like that. So um, we do some fun stuff in there, but we also like, go a, a lot more in depth on um, explaining concepts that are a little bit more difficult to understand and stuff that's like basically jargon in the field. But I'll talk more about that in the yeah. GBM slide. Hey, hi, I'm the discussions director and the discussions group. We just meet and read research papers related to AI and discuss them and talk about like the limitations and the strengths of the paper and ideas that have been sparked from reading said paper. So. All right, and then last but not least, we have projects. Uh, right now we have six active projects and we're gonna go over all of them at the end. Um, and they're basically all student led. Uh, they're just for fun and they usually last about one or two semesters. And yeah, we'll go over them at the end. And I guess I'll be deep dives. Um, we also have this kind of placeholder. It used to be called just supplementary, supplementary. Um, but sometimes, you know, maybe like a grad student reaches out to us. It's like, hey, I want to give a lecture on this like cool, you know, advanced topic. Um, and so we also have deep dives, but these are not like a weekly scheduled meetings or anything. It's just sometimes a one-off thing um, that happens um, and can be pretty much led by anyone. Wait, just, just go back real quick. Basically, I just want to make a quick point is that um, all of these groups are available to anyone, even if you're a complete beginner with no, you know, no AI machine learning experience. It probably helped if you have coding experience already, but even that, you know, if you don't have any, um, you know, you're here to learn, you know, we're not here for uh, people, only for people that already know everything, because what would be the point, right? Um, and so any of these, they're, they're, very different in the way that they tailor the content, but they're all accessible. Um, maybe some advanced projects might be obviously a little bit more difficult to get into, um, but if you if you want to learn something, you know, like we're here to teach you and work with you, and um, it, it can be done. I've seen it done. So yeah. So uh, I'm the GBM director. Uh, my name is Reed, but. I work with Vicente and Pedro on the GBMs, and we usually present like as a group. Yeah, uh, yeah quickly. So my name's, my name's Pedro, <laughs> and that's Vicente. Vicente. So uh, like Pedro was saying, the GBMs especially are really like for beginners, and anyone can come to them because we're, what we're really trying to do is kind of explain the jargon in AI, like neural networks, you know, biases, weights, um, classifiers, all of those things. Um, and we really want like everyone to understand so that everyone has like a educational like foundation for this stuff so that you know you can go into the projects and you can contribute meaningfully or like if even if you just wanted to know that information you can really learn a lot about it. Um, but we don't just do that like we'll really go into like we'll do like fun stuff too like you saw um, not chat GPT because 
we couldn't do that today. But GPT-3, we did last semester, and we were doing some fun stuff. Like, we were trying to um, predict the political elections in the future. We we're trying to see how uh, GPT-3 would do against that. And that was, that was fun, and, like, just fun stuff like that. And um, I don't know who said it over here, but I know someone mentioned, like, Tuna video. Um, last semester, we are, we actually went over something like that. Meta released something similar to that, where it took in text and it converted it into like a video. And we kind of explained how that worked. Oh, sorry. We kind of explained how that worked and like, um, like what all went into that and how Meta kind of created that. So if you kind of, if you want to know stuff like that, then you should just come out to maybe the first meeting. And if, if you like it, then keep coming. Um, our current our current plan is actually to do the first meeting on something like chat GPT, right? Because that's that's the hot topic. That's what everyone's talking about nowadays. So that's like, hey, if you want to sound, you know, a little bit more educated when like the next time someone brings up chat GPT, then you know that's that's what we're doing. So yeah, I'm Layla, the discussions director. And there's also another discussions director, his name is Stefan, but he'll be coming back like next week. It's just saying if you see him around. Where is he currently? Yeah, he's currently at MIT. He did like a uh, semester research there. So yeah, but discuss discussions, like I said, we um, read research papers. So I feel like a lot of knowledge gaining is can be done through reading. And like, if you wanna know how these models actually work and what the science is behind them, then you have to like read the papers because that's how researchers publish what they know. So. But anyone can join these meetings. Like I try to make them super beginner friendly, and like we're just talking about the big conceptual ideas. Yeah. All right, and then. All right, I'm Kyle. I'm the projects director, and here we have our projects coordinator. Um, and Bobby. Projects are basically. All student led. We, um, like I said before, they usually last about a semester or two. Um, just out of curiosity, who was not in a project last semester with our club? All right, that's about half. Um, but yeah, basically, we have six active projects right now. Um, they're some of them are beginner level, some of them are intermediate, some of them are advanced. But um, you don't need to have any knowledge to go into any of them. Um, even if you can't. And, you know, add anything to the project, you just attend the meetings, um, you know, see how the leadership does it. Um, and we also allow students to lead their own projects. Um, we have six active right now where you can propose your own idea and lead your own project this semester. Um, yeah. At the end, we'll go over each one of the projects. Are there any quick questions about EDM discussions or projects? I'll pause for a little bit so you have time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there maybe a place where we can kind of like see a summary on all the projects like in the Discord or? Yeah. Um, well, each project has their own like channel. So you could just like message the team lead um, and like ask for more information. Or we're, we're about to give like the present, like a uh, two minute presentation on like all of them anyway. So you'll hear more about them. Um, these are like some of the past projects that we've done. Um, Stonks is actually one of the ones that are still going on right now. Uh, that's the one that I'm leading. Um, there was a uh, team latex, which was optical character recognition. Um, there was like a Google assistant chatbot. Uh, there's team Gamebot, which is still active and our president Pedro is leading that one. Um, and we'll talk about all those. Yeah. Um, these, these are only just some, and I think, uh, some of, yes, yeah, so this picture is like the stock market prediction. Uh, that one was from like, even a, a long time ago, maybe 2020, maybe even longer ago. They're trying to make uh, an AI that could control Super Smash Bros. And their end goal was to be, uh, I think his name was Hungrybox. He was like one of the top Super Smash players in the world. Um, I don't think it ever reached completion, but I, I mean, they're working on it, so you want to pick it back up. And I think that's just more object detection. But the idea is in the last uh, five, six years, we've had, a, I don't know, probably already like, 20 something projects and I actually made a list of all of them in the Discord. So you can go ahead and see. Um, and you can pick back, like if you're like, oh, that was a cool idea, you know, you can you can pull it from the archive and be like, hey, you know, you want to restart this thing. So um, and of course you can also join our, our active projects. Yeah, Songs was actually one of the archive projects and I picked it back up and um it's been going for about a year now. So 
Um, so yeah, like I said, um, you know, you don't have to like feel obligated to contribute. You don't have to like attend all the meetings. Um, also, if you guys decide to be a team lead and you have like a pretty big team, we can reserve rooms for you guys. So um, make sure to DM me about that if you need that. Um, yeah, now we can go into. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> How we run our um, meeting. Yeah, so kind of like this meeting, you know, we're here in person. Um, we're we're trying to always be there in person. You know, it's hopefully no pandemic 2.0 comes out. Um, and so we always recommend that you also come in person. We do try to host Zoom and post recordings uh, afterwards. Uh, sometimes the quality isn't good. You can't hear the mic. You know, the, it cuts abruptly. It's a, the quality is never really guaranteed with that. Um, but it is a, you know, a favor that we try to do for the people who like have class or work and they really can't make it. Um, and so the GBMs and discussions will be in this room on Wednesdays at the same time. They will alternate. So like one week GBMs, next week discussions. Um, and then projects, as you can see here, each project team, you know, has its own freedom to like Oh, well, we want to do another thing this time. It's a little bit more like self governed in that way. And you just talk to your project lead about that. So, date, time, and style. If you only want to meet online, that's perfectly fine. If you want to meet in person, we can help you get that arranged too. Yeah. All right. So, now we'll go on the uh, project pitches. Um, first up, we have Team Multimedia. This is one of our beginner level projects, and it's our biggest one too. Yeah, so in the team multimedia, we are the very good end. And we were trying to create a multimedia recommendation system that can like recommend multiple types of media, like movies, uh, songs, books, uh, at one point maybe in the future, and other ones. Um, uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> we want to, well, Recommendation systems are like everywhere right now. And they are interesting not only because they have all of these applications and let's say like Netflix, Spotify, et cetera, but also they are interesting from a research standpoint because right now all of these multimedia AIs have, have been coming out. For example, like text to video, like uh, text to image and all of those connections that began to appear like emergent behaviors when you try to connect different types of media. And we're trying to be the uh, try to discover if there's a connection between all of those. So ideally in the future, what we want to do is create like this high dimensional spaces so that we can uh, merge all of the different types of media together. And then by different means, so, such as uh, clustering or matrix factorization, we can recommend um, things to the user so that they, they like it. Oh, and most of what we are trying to do right now and we want to find in the future is first like signal processing for, for audio, natural language processing, uh, computer vision, if you want to join the project. And then we use all of them. We're trying to use the most new architectures, which are like transformers, clustering algorithms, uh, NLP, CD, and SD is the same fields that I named above. And um, then, as I mentioned, it has like a lot of applications, and um, there are many frontiers in, in what science. Is. So. Um, yeah, so with the and with the multimedia thing, the idea is that you could um, you, you can go like even cross discipline, right? So you could have like a you could have like, oh, based on you like this video game, well, now we recommend you this movie, you know, or, oh, you like this movie, we'll recommend you this book, something like that. So it's not even just, you know, like within each category, but it could be entirely processed. So this is the, the GameBot project. Uh, this is just a little short video. And actually, unfortunately, Heroku uh, no longer has a free tier on their website. So our demo is not currently working, but the idea, if you got a little bit of a picture from the animation, uh, which which we sent the made by the way, it's really great using the three blue one brown animation library. Um, so the idea is that we want to make an AI. Um, so it, it's it started off basically. Um, if you guys have heard of Alpha Zero, have you heard of Alpha Zero here? 
few of you. That was the chess AI, which came out um, and beat the currently known best chess computer, not even the chess human, but any program that any human had ever written to play chess, um, it went out and beat it. And the way that that AI was trained was using a method called um, self-play reinforcement learning, which the idea is it plays games against itself. So in that example, they use chess. So it's like if I sit down at a chessboard and make a move for white, and then I make a move for black, and I make a move for white. And just by playing against myself and seeing the outcome of the game, um, I can then determine, oh, when, when I made these moves as white, I won, right? So in the future, I'm going to make those moves. And when I made these moves as black, I won. Um, and by playing probably on the order of trillions of games, um, it eventually, you know, just the machine learned itself. It wasn't like any human had to encode like, oh, the queen is worth nine points or anything like that. Um, and so I, I really looked at that and thought it was a very powerful idea because it can be applied to anything, and which is actually what the team at DeepMind is basically doing now uh, with MuZero, uh, which is like the successor to that one. Um, they've started applying it to uh, compression algorithms, uh, matrix multiplication algorithms, um, protein folding, literally like you name it, in every field they're like, we can use this idea of an AI, you know, we simulate it playing the game against itself as if like, the game is to, what's the best way to fold this protein to simulate human protein folding? Um, and by just doing that, it can start with knowing nothing and become, you know, one of the most intelligent things in the world on that subject. And so, I really cared about the method more than the actual, you know, game that it was applied to. And so we wanted to start small. So we thought, okay, what if we can train just a simple tic-tac-toe, you know, AI, but using entirely self-play reinforcement learning. So we're not encoding anything about, you know, what is a, what is three in a row or what is five in a row or anything like that. We're just saying, hey, you learn and we'll, you know, after you play multiple games against yourself and know whether you won or lost, uh, you learn what the best moves are. Um, and to make it a little bit harder, instead of just doing like a three by three tic-tac-toe, um, we're actually trying to expand to be able to solve any tic-tac-toe board. Like it could be 10 by 10 tic-tac-toe and you need five in a row or six in a row to win. Um, and, you know, but really the idea is if we can get it working for even a small case, like a you know, three by three grid, then we can train that same model, which is more computing power to any size grid and theoretically even any game. You could reconnect four chess, you know, it's just, you take the algorithm and you just plug in a different game and it, it really works, you know. Um, so we've been working on that project for about a year and a half. And that's why it's kind of labeled the advanced project because it, it will take some getting into, you know, if you're just a beginner, um, because you, not only do you have to, you know, learn everything that's necessary, but you also have to catch up to where the code base is now, uh, which takes a little bit of time, but it can be done. And if you think this is really cool, like I do, then I'd highly recommend that you come join, check out the project. Even if you don't want to contribute anything, you just want to, you know, see what we're doing. Um, that's, that's, that's the team game box. Yeah. All right, next up we have Project Harmonize. Um, so the team leader for this actually decided to discontinue it, but um, one of you guys want to pick it back up, uh, you're more than welcome to. It's basically um, converting, using AI to generate music. Um, you want to talk more about that? I mean, yeah, so I mean, you kind of just, you could, it, it's kind of like um, how the AI generates images, but except this one, they generate music. So, oh, wait. Oops. Right. Yeah. So didn't we actually have a, a tab open that it was doing music generation? Do you yeah. guys still have that? Maybe we plug it when you wait for the other thing. Oh, that thing is good. Sharp. Yeah, if, if, if you can't find it, you know, like, yeah, either then way. it's fine. Um, and then next up, we have Write the Text. Is the team lead here? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, this is another project that we're doing. I don't know why the formatting got messed up, but yeah. Google Slides. <laughs> Well, basically, um, you write text on a piece of paper and you point the camera to it and it converts it into um, the text on your computer. 
That's the general idea. Um, if you'd like to know, know more about it, you can message the team lead on the designated channel on our Discord. Um, next up, we have Chess AI. Our team leader is actually here for this one. Yes, first one. <laughs> That's nice. um, so I have been running this uh, Chess AI team for a semester now. This is our second semester. Uh, it was kind of nice because the first semester was a lot of board visualization and bugs to get a working version of our AI. But basically, it's an engine that plays against humans and other engines, uh, whatever you want to verse it with. <laughs> get the formatting out. That's definitely what's going to do. Um, but right now, we have a working version. Uh, it's locally run, so we don't have like a server we're running it on. But if anyone wants to go to our meetings, uh, then you can see it working. And, you know, it's beginner friendly. It's a uh, really decision based AI. So there's no machine learning or anything like that, uh, even though we might expand to that later. Um, so all we're doing is really working with uh, data structures and algorithms and stuff to come up with our moves. Uh, right now it's slow, but it comes with the best move, uh, the depth of two. For those who know chess turns, like two moves deep, it can generate the best move two moves deep right now, uh, like relatively quick. So enough to play. Uh, we try it three and it takes like, seven minutes for a move so it's not no one's really playing a guy in chess and waiting seven minutes every move but uh yeah so if you want to come to our meetings uh it's cut off at the bottom there but there are tuesdays uh 11 30 to 12 50 p.m in the mathematical science building room 108 or 109 i think it's 108 uh but if you want to know more just join the uh, team discord i have it in the ai discord my own channel and it's hashtag team chess ai and then our Discord is in there, so you can do it. Yeah. Any questions for Chess AI? I guess not. So all the channels, most of the channels have their own Discord. Yeah. So you're gonna. Okay, this is what I'm reading. Uh, by the way, I'm Avi. If you didn't get the name on it. Um. Yeah. So for this one, uh, we're basically just. Like it's we're basically kind of making a translator. So for sign language. Um, so you kind of just make sign and the translator. This is the blog by the way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, this is pretty beginner friendly. Um someone came up with this but never let it, so I just kind of took it up. And I really didn't know much either. So yeah, we got we got um we got it to a point where you can give certain like symbols and it'll tell you what it is. Um, we just need a bigger data set because right now we only have like four and three. So it's not that accurate. Um, we're good, we're gonna we're gonna do it. But yeah, if you want, um, you can join the server. Well, in the channel there's an invite for server. So yeah, enjoy the server. Pretty beginner friendly. You can go again. All right, now it's time for songs. This has been going on for about a year. Um, I'm the one that's leading this project, but we've had many other team leads that attempted it and they never like fully got it working. I think I remember the first version or one of the early versions um, was they were trying to use Twitter, like tweets from Twitter to do sentiment analysis to predict the stars. <laughs> that's um, not what we're doing now. I thought it was funny. But yeah. That's not what we use, but we used um, an LSDM model. This is what we came up with. Um, we have a pretty large data set that we trained it on. Um, and this is a Microsoft uh, price. And um, so this was last semester's prediction. And then after this, we decided uh, we should probably try to predict uh, candlesticks. And if you guys don't know what those are, uh, they look like this. Um, they basically help uh, traders like analyze the stock better. Uh, so this is like, the actual values of it. Um, we generated uh, this ourselves, by the way, using um, Matplotlib. And this is what we predicted. It's, it's way off. Um, first of all, they're all green. And it's not supposed to be like that. And it's just not just this data set either. Like, I have like 6,000 data points that were all green somehow. So uh, that's something we have to fix this semester. Um, so the main goal of this semester is just like improving our model, improving the uh, generated uh, candlestick chart and um, maybe use something other than LSDM to make the predictions. 
Um, you know, Pedro was talking about the method they used for the game. Maybe that would work in our uh, prediction. But yeah, that's our project. Well, I want to say a, a quick note on that is that, uh, you know, if when you, I mean, I feel like probably most of you have written, you know, data structure algorithms or whatever, you know, simple, hello world, whatever. And, um, or obviously harder problems, but without machine learning. And maybe your code never, it never works the first try, it never works the second try. You know. But it works on maybe the 10th try after you fix it and change things around. AI, just 10x that. You know, if your code works on the 10th try normally, your AI project will work maybe on the 100th try. You know, so this stuff is not easy. And that's why we've been doing these projects for so many years. Um, don't, don't expect it to work. You know, sometimes you're going to be demotivated. There will be a lot of failures, but every failure is a learning opportunity, right? So if you fail, you know not to do that again. Um, and that's really powerful. Yeah. And I can say, like, before we got this chart, like, you know, the lines were like even worse than this. Uh, it was like all over the place, especially after COVID. Um, stock prices got like really unpredictable. They're like all over the place. So um, yeah, but we you know worked on that. I uh, ended up improving the model to uh, come out of this. And a quick question. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, is that model? Um, I guess are you training it right now to try and mimic that, or is it like forward looking? Does it? Predict? It's not. Yeah. We're, we want to get us to be forward looking. That's another goal with this. It's another objective for this semester, but this one is not forward looking. This is just like past data. Um, I think this is like a span of like, this is every minute in like the past like 60 days or something. Um, we're using uh, Yahoo Finance to gather our data set and it doesn't let us go further than like 60 days back. So yeah, so it's not forward looking right now. Um, but yeah, any other questions on stocks? And one other quick note is if you want a leadership experience, you know, you don't have to necessarily be the best coder, the best at machine learning or at AI to be a great leader. You know, if you just want to learn how to, you know, take up a team and work with, with people who, you know, even if they know more than you, um, you can still help the project come to life because leadership is also really important, as you will see. Um, so there's all kinds of opportunities to not just, you know, sit there and code, but also to be a leader and put stuff on your resume. Yeah, I can say that um, when I picked up the stocks project, like I didn't have much experience either. Um, I wasn't even like a director in the club. And then after I picked it up, I even became like the project's director. So if you guys want to get into like our club leadership, uh, being a project lead is uh, a great way to get into that. Oh, yeah. Also, um, I'm a senior right now, and I'm going to be working at JP Morgan after college. And when I did my interview with them, this project is like all they asked me about. So if you guys are interested in like fintech, uh, fintech companies love this. Um, I think I got like most of the interviews I got were like fintech companies, like Goldman Sachs, um, uh, JP Morgan, um, Capital One, like companies like that. So, um, so if you guys are interested in any of our projects, or if you have your own idea, uh, please scan this form. Um, it's going to ask you which project you want to join. And then it also has um, an optional section at the bottom that asks uh, if you want to lead your own project and to give um, a small like description of it. And um, yeah, yeah, take place in time to scan it. And you don't need to like fill it out to join a project. You guys can like just like show up to any meeting if you want. And like I would suggest that like the first week, uh, just show up to like as many meetings as you want. And um, see which project that interests you the most, and then stick with that project uh, for the rest of the semester. Um, yeah, I think that's the last slide. Yeah, I think we should be one. Just like more ideas. But... Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's the thing. If anybody has any ideas that they thought about that you want to pitch right now? Yeah, I mean, we'd be happy to steal your idea and make a million dollars. Um, kidding. Uh, but yeah, if you have any ideas for a project right now that you want to, you know, pitch, you know, we, we, we had someone uh, at the first projects meeting of last semester, they just came up with an idea on the spot. And then uh, we were like, hey, well, you want to lead that project? And like, yeah, sure. Um, so if you have ideas, anyone, you, you want to keep them to yourself so we don't steal it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, using 
horse race video to predict the winner for an average. Interesting. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great project and pretty doable. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> All right, so we'll take that idea and then just you know bet on the right horse. That's it. That's your dog. Better than stock. Any other ideas? Like saying, you know, you don't have to know a lot to just be creative. So I um kind of a variation of the horse thing because I don't know how well the horse one would go, but what about one for like predicting um what cards are gonna come out in poker? Things like that. Hmm. Or maybe black deck, like yeah. poker like yeah. like for data you give it, yeah. And I think they actually, I mean, I've seen that done before. They had, I think they made an AI play poker against like a professional poker player and eventually it started beating them and they were kind of upset about it. Um, yeah. And then I think we also had a university sports predicting AI project, which I think has been discontinued, but uh, basically just looking at, you know, data about the team, it's past history, and then try to predict, you know, who's going to win in the UCF football game. So, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of like sport. Oh, God. I just have an idea. Yeah. Like something sure. maybe like um, looking at different plots of like films and books and kind of like assessing, I guess, how basic it is, like how predictable it is. Um, because I noticed just from watching a lot of movies that a lot of people have like a very, like a template, a very basic structure. So like that could be a, a metric to use like in determining hey, is this actually worth watching? Because if it's basic and predictable, like a Hallmark movie, I'm not gonna spend a new one. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And that's totally a thing that I mean I, I don't think I've ever heard that idea before. Um but there are things like clustering algorithms um in that you learn about in your machine learning class or, or whatever that you know can can do that sort of thing. It seems like we categorize these movies into clusters and we see 90% of the movies are in this giant cluster of like all being the same type. And then you want to find out what the 10% is that's like unique and different, you know, totally doable. Yeah, maybe our multimedia team can uh, work on this. Yeah. Some great ideas. Good job, guys. Okay, yeah, make sure we write these down. <laughs> so I can, uh, yeah, write them down. Don't let anyone steal them. We just gave them away for free, but um, that, that's one of the things, you know, an idea is one thing, but the implementation comes out to it, it's not as easy as just like make it happen next day millionaire um if if it was you know that'd be great but it, it does take a lot of work and so it's great to start with an idea and then you got to put in the work to make it happen make it a reality but it's it's not impossible that's for sure cool um yeah yeah there's no deadline on yours by the way like if you guys don't have an idea right now, but you think you want later on down the line, you can just throw it up anytime you want. Go ahead. I got one. All right. Using audio data from crying babies to determine what they need. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. That's good. Actually, I watched a video and where um, people who are like their career is health related. They're like, oh, if the baby makes this kind of sound, then that means that it wants to, you know, for whatever. So like. <laughs> I like your idea because maybe like assessing different things that have already been categorized, like supervised. Uh, yeah, supervised. Yeah, yeah. yeah not like frequency, duration, and the actual yeah. audio. Itself. So, yeah, I mean, if Siri, if Siri can detect exactly what you're saying, right, then an AI could very much detect whatever what a baby's saying. You know, maybe maybe speak in their own language that we just don't understand, but we can train an AI to understand it. Um, Give me milk, mother. <laughs> That's pretty much what they're, what they're always saying. Yeah. yeah. I actually just thought this, I don't know if it's exactly if it was AI or not, but the, I think there's this technology in development where um can translate what animals are trying to say and what we need to talk to animals. That's yeah, that's like the classic sci-fi, you know, it's like I want to hear what my dog's thinking at all times. And then when you actually hear it's like, I want to stick, I want to stick, I want to stick. A million times every day. And they're just like, no, why did I make Yeah, this? and they're like, okay, shut that thing up. Um, but yeah, totally, you know, all that stuff. Well, you know, we we need a better understanding, of course, of the biological factors and, and all that. But um, there, there's a lot of examples in history that you've seen that we've been able to harness the power of something even before we fully understood it. Um, 
So that's great. You know, write these things down. Um, and yeah, just that's that's really my recommendation. R write it down and, and keep it. Cool. You wanna, and then after that, I think was just yeah, help wanted. So um doing all this, you know, making all this stuff happen requires, you know, a commitment and work from all the people here and more people that you don't see. Um, and some of the people sitting down too. Um, so we always need more help for, you know, leadership coordinators helping us find meeting content, find fun things to do. Um, your ideas, your presentations. Um, we also have the Discord and the social media stuff that we need posts on for advertisement and outreach. We need fundraising all the time. Um, reviewing tools for workshops. Um, if you just like having fun, you know, that's that's one thing that I think a, a lot of uh, programmers sometimes forget is to like just go out and like have some fun, you know, just go and bowling or something. Not just like, no, I want to sit here and code all day. Um, we, we need more of that stuff, you know, um, because it, it, it gets people motivated and helps you make friends. You know, it's not just about being, you know, stuck there staring at the screen all day. Um, so always seeking coordinators and you can apply using that link, of course. Um, and you know, we'll 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 help you with, with that process. But if you if you want to help, you know, we're we're always willing to, you know, have someone help us that's that's awesome and, and work with you and get you up to speed and everything. So yes, help wanted for pretty much anything and everything. Um, at all points in the semester, not yeah, just yeah. now. Yeah, actually, especially towards the end of the semester because. You know, things always drop off, people get more busy, there's finals, there's midterms, all this stuff. Um, so we, we need we need more people. So <laughs> um, the Discord, I think at least 99% of you must already be on the Discord. Um, uh, or maybe you you just heard about this based on like an email that was sent out or something, but Discord is where we post everything. So if you're if you have any questions, you either it's already answer it on the discord or you can just ask it there and someone will answer you um and we have all other sorts of stuff um you can find on our website on our link tree um but definitely the discord is the thing you don't want to miss if there's one thing that you check to know about the club it's the discord uh, also another thing um a lot of people make this mistake but when you first join the discord server um, make sure you like react to the message and announcements if you don't you won't have access to any of our channels so yeah um, and we have to do that because we get bots all the yeah. time that are like, yeah, we'll do your homework for you, pay us money and all these scams and schemes and stuff. Um, because we're, I think well, it's probably like a thousand people on the Discord server. It's not more. It's like 1,400. Yeah. And that's because like we've kicked out with like probably like 2,000 people have like are like left and, you know, or, or have been, yeah, we, we basically like, I, we remove like inactive users and stuff and all that stuff, and there's still like a bunch. So, yeah. Questions. So, yeah, this this is not the end. This is the second to last slide. So, um, but yes, yeah, so if you have any questions, now is the time. Or of course, if you think of it later, ask me on Discord. Like to wait a, a little bit because. I, I always hate when that happens when you're in class and you know the professor's like questions. Okay, move on. And it's, I didn't even have time to think of one. Yes. Are there going to be like are you going to try and do meetings on a weekly basis? Yes. For like each director group or not for projects, but. So yeah, the, the GBM and discussions alternates. So it's weekly, but it's just a different meeting each week. So like this week, GBM, next week, discussions, you know, it's like that. Yeah, and then you. projects, you kind of do it at your own pace. If you want to meet five times a week with your project team, because you guys you know, just love it, then you can. And if you want to meet once a month because you're super busy, I'll be fine. So for projects, it's like, um, probably we're going to have like once a month check-in type of thing. Where once every two weeks, where all the people, all the project leads or anyone, everyone just comes in and just kind of kind of tells like, oh, our, what's our progress? You know, 
what have we been doing and we can just give feedback on any of the problems anyone's been having. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's a big thing. It's not like there's there's really no pressure. Like this is entirely for fun and like based on how much you want to do. So don't don't think that like you know some people are like oh do we need to like you know like submit documentation for a project or like do we need to you know prepare something to present it's like um we'll we'll let you know if, if we like to if we think it's really cool and want you to do something like that but the, the extent of your participation is totally up. Any other questions? So maybe a half a question somewhere like that. Okay. Okay. So now the actual oh. last slide. <laughs> and um, so this is that was actually uh, this is what we did after the fall intro meeting. Um, and I was like, wait, that's a, that's a good idea. People will probably be hungry after the meeting. So um, I haven't figured out like necessarily. We don't necessarily have to do pizza. Um, but Lazy Moon is a you know club favorite that we just we just happen to like. Yeah, we, we love pizza. Um, so if anybody wants to meet up and go get food after this, um, we're, we're totally down for that. Um, it could be pizza, it could be something else. If you have suggestions, uh, we're also open. And uh, at least some of us have cars if you if you live on campus or whatever. So I want to end off, you know, not on questions, but on like food. So <laughs> I think it usually makes people happier to hear. All right, and I think that's the, the final slide, right? So, yeah, that should be it. Thank you all for coming out. This has been really great. Thank you. Uh,